Okay, we're back in Blocks app. This is the sixth tutorial, and we're just going to be looking at adding some brick elements to the blocks and rearranging them. So we've opened up the Blocks app. I've come along and I click on the icon on the left, and that will give me a new Blocks app document. It opens up, and as we've seen before, there's three sections. You can add a navigation bar, body content, and also a footer down the bottom. Up at the right, you have a hamburger menu, which gives you the options for your elements, or the block you're using, or the page, or the site. Okay, so first we'll do is save it. And remember, you need to set up a site folder, which I've done here. And inside there, I've got all my image assets I want to use in my project. Okay, so I need to save this um, document inside the Blocks app folder. It's coming up with my site. I will just leave it as that, um, but you can name it anything you want. And once you've done that, always remember that you're in the site and it will have design and have SEO. And this is where you would give it a name. And I'm just going to call it Blocks Site, but you will call that anything you wish. You can also add keywords and a description about what your site's for, and also put any analytics coding if you've got the Google Analytics to follow your site once you've uploaded it. So you can add those into that. Also, when we move along, we've got the favicon. And just a quick recap, you'll need to import your image assets. So you go to the file menu and you go import assets. You need to navigate to where you put all your images. I've scaled all these appropriately for the uh, website. Uh, most of them have a maximum width of 1200 pixels. And I'll just come down here by Favicon, and then I'll just bring in some more out of the folder. And this just populates our assets folder that we can use. And I've got that. Now, again, recap these are the ones I've just imported in here. These are the patterns that are already in here um, in the Blocks app. And also, these are some clip art photographs that are already built into Blocks app to just get you started. Okay, so I'll close down the assets panel. And once I've done that, I'm in the site options, I'm in miscellaneous, and I've got the favicon. So I click here and I put them in my project assets and I've just created this little icon of a car, which I'm gonna use as my favicon, which will appear up in the menu bar when it's previewed in the browser. Okay, so once that's set up, I'll go back to the design and we're just gonna look at putting some page elements, but first of all, I'll just put a navigation bar up at the top. I'll choose any one of these. I'll put that at the top. Now, once I've got that, I'm going to add some blocks in the body section. So I click on the body section. And again, this will give you a number of options. That you, the, All these are empty. So if you click on the left icon at the top there, it's turned blue. That means these are all sort of empty blocks that you can add brick elements to. And these are blocks that are really already populated with little brick elements in there. All right. Now I'll just come back here and I'm going to look at adding these sorts of elements. These are just column structures that you have on here that you can rearrange information on. So say, for example, I want a block that has three columns. I click on here and it gives me a block that has three columns. Now these are sections within it. Now, what I would do then is I would say right mouse click and the bricks options appear down the bottom. So what we have is these blocks and then these are brick elements, which are the components that are nested inside the blocks. So if you can imagine this is a div tag, if you know about div tags and this is a div tag. And basically what you're doing is you're just adding child elements inside the now, at the bottom, there's some popular ones. Add an image, add a header with some, some paragraph text, add a button, add a link, add an icon. If we click on the plus, it will bring up and it will have a number of other options. Certainly have the common ones that people will use. Then it has some groups in headings, paragraphs. Uh, also, you've got the media elements where you can have... Uh, all different types of images placed upon there. 
Also then we have uh, buttons, so you can add buttons and text links, and then also it has form elements, and then miscellaneous, you just have a divider, and you can break up page elements, and also you can add iframe information where you can put in custom markup. Right, so say for example, I go back here and I go along here, and I say in this section, the media section, I'm gonna go for icon rounded. So I click on that. Now then I click done. And once I've got that, when I hover the mouse over here, these sort of columns on here will turn blue and my cursor has got a green plus button on it ready to add my item. So where I choose to add it, I will just click and I'll put it on there. Now it's important that you right mouse click before you can edit it, before you select it. Now if I just try to select it and clicked again, it will give me another one and give me another one. So what you need to do is you need to right mouse click and that cancels out the bricks and they disappear. Then I can select it. You need to go to the options on the left. If they're not out, you need to click on the hamburger um, menu and that will bring it out. Now, number of things you do. First up, you can position it. So I can visit it uh, central into its parent element. So it's just um, inside that column. Once I've done that, I can take the size up. Uh, currently it's at 30. I could go to 100 and make it bigger. Now once I've made it bigger, I can also click over here in the options, I can click on the actual icon itself and you can actually change it to another icon. It's got all these uh, components on there and you can go through them and you can change it to another icon like that. So it's, so it's pretty simple how to do that. Also, you can change its color. I can go down here. Now I need to select the color. So I get blue and I select the color here, blue. And when I'm happy with that color, I click the plus, which is underneath for the hexadecimal, and it will add it to my swatches. Now, when you are using Blocks app, you need to make sure you have your color scheme selected within the swatches that you're using. The If you just do it by using the color picker above, it does it globally, so it can change lots of elements right across your page or your design. So it's important that you define colors in the swatches and then use them later. And that's probably good practice if you're making a project to create a swatch of colors you're going to use in your color scheme. Set them up to begin with and then apply them to your design elements. That's a simple way of doing that. When you're in your color here, you have to go down to the bottom here and on the left panel and click done and it takes you back out. Right, so we, we've got that set up. And that's how you would put elements on there and move them around. Now what I could do now is I could bring up some um, text. So say if I want to text in there, I right mouse click, I can go down and I'll click on the plus on the bricks down at the bottom. Then I can go to my text elements and say, I just want a little bit of text here. So I select the paragraph, click done. And then I would come up here once I've got that selected. And when I move the mouse around, you'll see it's prompting me to just put it underneath. So the blue line appears, that's what you're looking for. So move it around and then I click and it'll place it underneath. Remember to right mouse click and you can center that text and you can make it bigger if you wished. Now there are keyboard shortcuts, which we looked at before. I hold Alt and the arrow up and it'll make it bigger or make it smaller. Okay, you've got those elements. Now also you can reposition these. So say for example, I need to take this down a bit. So I'll go over to the left options panel, take it to 30. Now say I wanted to reposition that within that box. So what I would do is say, I've got the icon selected. I go for the position and I went left. Now what that would do is move my icon left and sort of wrap the text around it. Then if I could make the bigger, you'll see that's what it's doing. Or if I wanted to go back into the position right, it will move it around the other way. Now I will come back down and I'll just go right mouse click on here again. I will now click on the button, hover my mouse over here and that will add a button.
So I've got a button. Remember to right mouse click to get rid of the brick so it's not adding a new one. And the same thing can happen. So if you go to the options on the left, you've got button that says label. I can say change it to something else, submit. Then you can change how the button looks. You've got a number of options. One is just a flat design, which is it, which is in. Another one is you what we call clean, which is sort of puts a little bit of a drop shadow on it uh, and puts uh, some bevels on it. Glossy, it will change it to sort of a glossy feel, and then it will have a, a wire, which will make it like a ghost button. Now you can, if I come back up and make flat, you can go all the way down to the bottom and you can change the color. So I could select uh, another color range up here, then I hit the plus where the hexadecimal value is, and you'll see my button has um, changed to that color. I'll just uh, change the spelling on that. Okay, so that's how, how you would work with the button. Also, you can change it so you can make it round, so it'll make it round on there. You can also make it a square if you wished. Um, I'll just take it back to rounded. You can change the size, so I'm on large. I can go XL, which is about this big, so it'll make it a lot bigger. Now you can put interactions on there, which we've looked in previous tutorials. So you can come up here and have it to uh, navigate to another page. So if you want to link to another page, an external website or scroll to target is making it go to another section on your website if you had one page, or you can use it literally as a submit button to submit uh, a form element. Further down, you can have animations, which again, we've looked at uh, briefly in a previous tutorial. Um, then they're the options that you would use. And again, how you would uh, place those elements, you can change here where I've got it left, I can have it centered. So that's just how you would add an element, such as a button on the, and there isn't any option to do rollovers at present. Now I've got that whole block selected, so I, this block the main block i click on here and you'll see i haven't named it so i'll just call this test dash block so i know what it's called always name your block so that's the main block that's is the outer block here how i know it's got it selected is we've got the delete the block item here now this is an element inside it sort of this box and then i've got these other elements inside that block now that's selected here and it's a container so it has an appearance and currently it says three columns that's what i put it on us but say for example i wanted to make it two i just change it to two or i could even take it up and make it four and add other elements so i'll just take it back down to two so you can change those now the other thing you can do is change the margin so you can have small or I can go for large and this is just making a gap at the bottom and the top of your um, outside block so that container is just sort of being pushed in a little bit so I'll take it small and put it on there you can also again everything you have on there you can have it animated so you can have whatever you wanted to have that block doing so you can do things like that if you wanted to i use these uh with caution caution um you can have them um, activated when you scroll down or go to a new page most elements uh, block apps allows you to to do things like that so you know use them with 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 caution some of them are a little bit more less obvious than other ones so so they all give you those options so if you haven't created any elements uh, any column structures and you want to add more column structures that's how you would do it once you put that on there now to delete objects you would certainly come along and click on them and it has a little x at the top and you can delete it okay so you can get rid of those elements if you don't want them anymore and you can just delete them and again if you want to get rid of the block you click on the block itself and you can delete it so that's how you just work with some custom elements